In this module, we'll be learning about the WCF Send Adapters, or the BizTalk Send Adapters that can use Windows Communication Foundation to send messages to web services or systems that are enabled with web service listeners. In the first lesson, we'll see how the WCF Send Adapters integrate with BizTalk Server to combine these two tech messaging technologies. We'll see how to consume a web service through the messaging layer without any orchestrations. And in lesson three, we'll then see how to use orchestrations as well to consume web services. And finally, we'll look at some of the WCF Send Adapter security, the different options you have for authentication and message security. The first lesson is focused on the various scenarios where you might use the WCF Send Adapters and an understanding of the Send Adapter architecture. When you're in a scenario with BizTalk Server, it's all about integration and connecting with various types of systems. And so we may need to leverage not just the other adapters that we have that might be able to talk to various database systems or line of business applications, but also leverage the send adapters to talk to external partners or even internal systems where we need to leverage using web service protocols and web service transports to do that. For external systems, we may just need the ability to use something such as HTTP and secure SOAP messaging to send those messages to a partner that exposes web services. Internally, we may leverage things like the atomic transaction support that's provided through WS Atomic Transactions Protocol to send messages to a variety of systems and try and enroll those things in a particular transaction. The web service adapters, or the WCF adapters, give us access to all of those various protocols and the support for the common messaging format of SOAP that allow us to integrate with all these different systems, extending the reach of our BizTalk server. When we send messages, in BizTalk, we of course go through a map and a send pipeline, and then we arrive, or the message arrives at the send adapter. In BizTalk server with the WCF send adapters, inside that adapter, the adapter code is able to create what's called a WCF channel. Now this is the thing that all WCF clients use to talk to a particular service endpoint, and it's able to take the BizTalk message, convert it into a WCF message, or essentially a SOAP message, and then pass it down through its processing, the various channels to do the WS security or WS trust and those various protocols, and then send the message out over that particular transport. Of course, we can do request response style messaging as well, in which case a response message would come back through the channel layer into the adapter code back up through a receive pipeline and any kind of inbound maps before the response was published back to the message box. For our second lesson, we'll see how to consume web services using the WCF send adapters. We'll see how the BizTalk WCF service consuming wizard can help us in generating the artifacts we need, such as schemas. And then we'll use a demonstration to show you how to consume a web service. The process of consuming a web service is involves consuming a web service description language document. This describes all the various operations that are part of the service, gives us information about the namespaces for the service, and also provides us with the schema for any request and response messages that are expected in those various operations. When we use the BizTalk WCF service consuming wizard and pointed at a web service description language document, it can then generate the XML schemas. It can use the information in the WSDL document to create orchestration types for both the messages and the ports. And it creates us BizTalk binding files with all the information we need to create a new send port in the BizTalk administration console. We do this from within a BizTalk project and all those generated files then become part of our project that we can version control and, and reference just like any other file. 
To start the web service wizard within Visual Studio, we're gonna use the add generated item model to consume a WCF service, walk through that wizard, and then we can build and deploy the project. For this particular piece, when we're simply talking about messaging, that's really the bulk of what we need to do within the project. Then we pull in the binding file to get our send port, and we now have a messaging port that can talk to and consume a WCF service. As we use the consuming wizard, as I said, we use the add and then add generated items. And it's important to choose the consume WCF service option here for the add generated items. We have some others that have existed. There's the add adapter metadata and generate schemas that have been around since early versions of BizTalk server, BizTalk 2004. We also have a consume adapter service, which is something we'll talk about in a different module. Once you've chosen that, you walk through the wizard, again, you'll have those various elements added into your project. In this demonstration, then, I'll show you how to consume a web service using the WCF send adapters. We'll use the wizard to generate the items. We'll deploy those generated schemas that we created. We'll import the binding to create that send port so that we've got a full messaging setup to be able to call the WCF service. This demonstration will consume a web service at the messaging layer. I'm going to start with my schemas project. I'm going to add, add generated items. And I'm going to want to consume a WCF service. So I'll choose that. And then I'm going to need to walk through the BizTalk WCF service consuming wizard. Now here I want to expose, I want to talk to a service that's exposed metadata over an endpoint. And so I'll need to provide the address for that. So I'm going to provide an address of a service running locally. And that's going to be in the federal shipping virtual directory, and it's called shippingcharges.svc. And when I do a get, it's going to go out to that service. It's going to try and pull down the metadata for the service and use that information to create some artifacts. So when it finds it, we'll see that down here that we have the help page that's been pulled back. And now we'll specify that we want to stay in that same namespace for the schemas project and we want to import that metadata. Over on the right in the solution explorer, we'll see that we've had five new files added here. A couple of schemas, a couple of XML files, and one orchestration file. So if we open up this shipping charges, federal shipping com shipping, what we'll find in the schema is the definition of our request and our response messages. So get shipping price quote and get shipping price quote response. That tells me that the method or operation on this service that we're going to be calling is get shipping price quote. So I have the request, takes an order ID, a ship to country, an order amount, and I have a response, and that happens to be of type price quote. You can see that type defined down here with an order ID and a price. We've also got an orchestration and those binding files in there as well. And what I'm going to do is take this orchestration, I'm just going to move it up into my orchestration project because I want to have those all together there. There we go. And I'm going to create a map now on my this, these new messages that I've received. I want to create some maps for my existing schemas to these new schemas so that I can do some messaging, I can map back and forth here. So I'm going to build the solution first to get all the references updated. Now that that's done, we'll go up here to the maps project and add a new map. So I'll do new item and map. And I'm going to call this order, oops, order internal to get shipping price quote. 
And when the map comes up, then I'm going to have to choose, of course, the source and destination here. So I'll choose the source schema. Go up to my schemas project. So I've got a number of those schemas there. And in this case, I want to choose the order internal. And on the destination, then I want to go to my schemas. And I want to choose one of the new schemas now. So if we go into our schema that we looked at here, it's going to prompt me and ask me which root element or type I want to map to, and I'll choose the get shipping price quote. We'll just create a, a simple map here. So I'll go to the ship to and put the ship to country there. Do the order total to order amount. And for fun, we'll do a get to the string items here and we'll concatenate together our customer ID and the order date and we'll send those over as an order ID. So now we've got our map so we can map from an internal order to our get pricing quote. We've also got some other maps and other schemas in here of course and so now we want to deploy in this case, I'll just deploy the maps and the schemas because those are the only things I'm going to use in this messaging solution. We'll wait for that to finish and then we can go into the administration console. So our deploy succeeded. And in the administration console, then I'll go find my application. And we'll go to the receive ports here. I've got my two-way receive. I'm going to apply an inbound map here, external to internal. So I'm going to submit an external order. And on the receive side, I'm going to map that over to an internal order. And now notice that I don't have any send ports. So I'm going to go and import a binding file. We'll go out to our module directory here. We go to Northwind and our schemas. And here we've got our binding files that were generated by that wizard. Now the first one I'm going to choose is going to try and use a typed binding here or use one of the custom bindings. This provides a backup binding file that gives me the information for the using a custom, the WCF custom. So now we have our send port created here. If we go look at that, we can see that we've got a, a URI here. If we look at the configuration, there's the path. This all came from that metadata document we used. And we've also got some information down here in the operation mapping as well that's identified. So we'll cancel out of that. Now I'm going to apply an outbound map. So this is a map that's going to apply when we go to call this service. And so I want to apply that new map that I created because I want to map from the internal order that gets published to the message box to the shipping message that we need to apply here. I will apply a filter so we can map these up. So use the BTS receive port name. And over here, that's going to be Northwind. Oops, receive orders two-way. So I want to get all messages that come from that particular receive port. So let's start our application now to enable all of our ports. Everything's set up with our filters. Let's come out here and we'll call submit order get response. That's going to pick up our external order here. It's going to submit it to our receive location. That receive location then is going to publish to the message box. It gets routed to the send port. All our maps have been applied. It goes over to the other side. And what we get back then is our actual SOAP message. So we can see that this went through the process. We didn't map it on the way back out. And right here we see that we have a get shipping price quote response and a result. And we can see there's a price and an order ID that comes back from there. So we've 
consumed a web service. We pulled in all the artifacts that we needed in terms of the schemas for the messages. We pulled in the binding file that gave us all the configuration we needed for the send port. And we're able to use standard routing inside of BizTalk and, ma and mapping of messages so that we could receive a message on a two-way port, send that over to the orchestration, or send that over rather to the web service and receive a response back at the client using BizTalk as our intermediary. In our third lesson, we'll take a look at consuming services from within orchestrations. So we'll see the various steps that we need to go through to do that. And we'll see how we can map the logical operations on a port in an orchestration to the actual actions, the SOAP actions, that are important when we're trying to call a particular operation with web services. See how to format the request as well as select out particular content from the response message. And we'll see a demonstration of how to put all this together. When we're inside an orchestration and we want to call a web service, we're going to need a send port that represents that web service. It'll have all the operations that are available on that service as operations within the send port. The type definitions that we need within our orchestration for the port type and the message types will be generated for us by the WCF service consuming wizard. It doesn't just generate our schemas and our binding files for us, it also creates an orchestration and adds all the type information. So to do this, we'd first create a new configured port. We'll use the port type that was given to us. We'll create message variables and use the generated message types that we got from the service consuming wizard. And then we really get into typical BizTalk orchestration message processing. We need to construct the web service request message. We need to then connect, send and receive shapes to the port and configure them with the right messages. And as part of our orchestration processing then, we'll send messages out through a logical port. We'll receive messages back in for those request response style interactions, all just like we would with other types of messaging. I mentioned that we had to map the logical operations to actions. When a SOAP message arrives at a service, it needs to have what's called a SOAP action. This is a particular header that arrives within the SOAP message, and it identifies the action or the operation that you're trying to perform. And so for a given service that may have many different operations that it exposes, it's important that it knows which particular operation you're trying to call as you send a message to that service endpoint. What the SOAP action mapping allows us to do is map an operation name within our orchestration port to a particular SOAP action. Now much of this, when we run the wizard and use the binding file, would be generated for us. And we can use then an action mapping as you can see underneath the highlighted area of the dialog or it's BTS action mapping, or say there's an operation with a given name, then it has this action. Or you can use the model here that's highlighted where you can simply provide a single action. This works if your service only exposes a single operation, or if all the messages you're gonna be sending to this send port are only ever invoking that single operation because we've hard-coded the operation that we want to call. When we send messages out, we have the option to send the BizTalk message as the body, that's the default option. Or if you need to wrap some XML around the message, around the BizTalk message content, you can use the template mode to do that. This is gonna allow you to just use the placeholder, the BTS message body placeholder, to specify where in that template you want the actual content of the BizTalk message to go and then the additional wrapping elements will be present as well. Now this is in addition to what you can do with maps that you might apply or transforms that you could apply using standard BizTalk configuration for your send port.
when you have a request response style service invocation, where we're going to call the service and get a response, you also have the ability to specify the message handling for that response message or the message coming back into BizTalk server. So you can indicate that you want to, again, take the SOAP body or the entire SOAP envelope, or you can pull a particular piece of the message using a path or an XPath statement, and then you can also specify the encoding. Notice also that we have this checkbox to propagate fault messages. This is helpful if when we call the service operation it returns a fault. This enables us to publish that fault message to the message box. We can take that detailed fault message and handle it in our orchestration or our, our message processing. These options will look familiar if you've seen the module on receiving messages. And you can see they're just flipped here so that the uh, a template comes first because we're first sending messages and the message body handling in terms of the envelope body and path comes second because it applies to messages coming into BizTalk. So for both receive and send adapters we get these same options. When messages get sent you can use a template. When messages are received you can choose the pieces of the message that you want to use. Let's do a demonstration where we'll take a look at setting up a web service call within the orchestration designer. In this example, we're going to consume our web service from an orchestration. We've already created our binding files and our XML schema by consuming the service metadata. And we also have an orchestration here with some type information in it. What we're going to do is update our routing orchestration to go out and call that web service to get back the shipping charges and add those on to our billing message. So the first thing I want to do is create a new configured port. This is going to be my logical port that represents the web service call. We'll call it shipping charges port. And I'm going to look for an existing port type. And if we look, we'll see I have this shipping charges type. And you'll notice that it falls under the schema's namespace because it was originally generated in that project. This is the orchestra, this type comes from the orchestration that was generated from that metadata. In this case, I'll be sending a request and receiving a response. So now I have the port. Let's move that up to where we'll use it. Great, now I'll create a couple of message variables to represent my request and my response. So on this first one here, we'll call this the shipping quote request. And for the message type, we'll look for a multi-part message type. There's our input message type that was generated for us. Call this one shipping quote response. And we'll browse for that multi part message type again. This one's going to be called shipping charges get shipping price quote output message. Now, all those types are found in the shipping charges orchestration. It doesn't actually have any functionality in it, but if you look at the types, you'll see they're not grayed out as the shipping charges. And here are those multi part message types. That's why this orchestration was generated from the web service description language was to give us all of the that type information about the port and about the particular messages. So now that we have those messages, let's come in here and insert a transform. Let's see, we've got a construct and a transform now. In the transform, we want to use an existing map because we already have a map that maps from our internal message to our quote request. We'll go to maps. We'll use this order internal to get shipping price quote that I created earlier. And for the source, we can see we only have one option, which is the order message. And for the destination, then we have the shipping quote request parameters or that piece of the, the message type there. And move that down a little bit. So we've constructed our message now. We can see if we look at the construct message, that message is constructed. So shipping quote request. 
So let's add now a send and a receive down below that. So we've created the message. Now we want to send that message and we want to receive back the response then. So on the send, let's check our message. We use the shipping quote request. And on the receive, we'll change the message to shipping quote response. And then we can connect those up with our port here. So just like any other message exchange, we want to create the message. We can use a map, we can use message assignment, and then we send that message and we're going to receive a response back from that port. Now that we have that coming back, we're going to want to process that message that comes back in here. And that we know is going to be based on our schema down in here. And so I want to uh, actually come in here show promotions. I want to go find in the response the price. And I want to add that over here as a distinguished field. So I've simply taken the schema that was generated for me. Once we've generated that, we can come in and do all the same sorts of things. Let me just pull that up again. We can do all the same sorts of things that we do with other schemas because it's been generated. It's not going to change on us. We're not going to, we could regenerate it or replace it, but we'd need to go through these steps again. But I just want to promote that price now that we have in there so that I can use it in back here in my orchestration. So I'm going to come in and add a message assignment shape in here. And I want to take that billing message. And in there I have an order total. So I want to set that equal to itself, plus I want to get now the shipping quote response dot parameters. And I didn't build here, so I'm not going to get the IntelliSense, but it's get shipping price quote result dot price. We'll click OK. Now let's build all of this and make sure it picks all that up and I typed everything OK. It's building. Oh, doesn't look like it liked my There we go, a little typo. So we've created that message. We took the result that we got back and we use that then in the message assignment shape down here to change our order to billing. So that message was created in this transform and had a placeholder uh, of the price, the original price, and we went in and augmented that by adding on the shipping charges. So let's go up here and we wanna deploy the whole solution. Oh, still doesn't like my message. Let's go down to the end here. A little trick I've learned from BizTalk from way back. Let's try rebuilding and see if that fixes it. Rebuild all succeeded and we can deploy. So what just happened there is sometimes when you have an error, I, I mistyped that uh, name the first time and it got the idea that there was a problem in there. And when I didn't really uh, change it, it continued to think there was a problem. And so I had to just go back and, and add a couple lines or remove a couple lines and that forces it to reevaluate that expression, which in this case caused it to see that in fact, I had fixed it up by correctly uh, adding in the name or adding that reference. So now that we've deployed, let's go back out to BizTalk Administration Console and we'll refresh to make sure everything's current out here. And on our send port, now that we're going to use an orchestration, previously we were doing the mapping out here on the send port. We can remove that map and we can also remove the filter because we're going to hook this up to our orchestration. 
So let's go in and configure the application. Let's go to the route order here. I'll choose the host. Oh, I missed a step. That's why I'm missing that. I need to uh, import my binding file first. We got a additional receive here. So we'll pull in this binding file. It's going to create the receive port I want. There we go. On my other send ports, now I'll be able to configure this much better. There's my receive port. I've got shipping. That's going to point to my port that uh, got set up for me by the binding file. Have my billing, my audit, my additional ports that I have in my orchestration. And on this orchestration, notice that this is the orchestration that had all the types in it. I have to supply a host because that's required, but there aren't any logical ports. There's no bindings. Really, I don't even need to start this orchestration for things to run. But if I go try and start the overall application, it'll fail if I don't specify the host for this particular orchestration. We should be able to start now that we have all that configured. Come back here to pick up a couple of our folders. We should be able to copy this file over. The BizTalk host is started. It'll pick that up. It should go in and come out through the billing department here. So let's look at the original order. You can see there we have an external order with some prices. So 250 and another uh, 80. Four and some more down there. We go back and look at our output in the billing department. Just open that up with Internet Explorer. You can see that we've got now the order total over here where we've added in that price differential for the shipping charges that were calculated in there. So we've taken the artifacts that were generated by the consume WCF service wizard. We've created variables now in the orchestration for the port instance, the message instances. We've created that request message and sent it, received a response, and because we marked a field as a distinguished field, we're able to go into that response then and use that value to augment another message in here or to further process within our orchestration. In our fourth lesson, we want to focus on the send it after security. So we'll see how you can configure the various service uh, options to apply security. And we'll see some security applied at the WCF custom adapter as well, where you have full control over the WCF configuration properties as opposed to a custom dialog from any of the other WCF adapters. On one of the custom adapters like the WCF Net TCP, you'll find a security tab and you'll be able to choose the particular security mode. This will generally be transport or message and some of them also support a mixed mode or transport with message credential. Now you'll see that the UI is tailored to provide you custom options. So because message is selected as the security mode, the message security section is enabled it allows you to choose the client's credential type and the suite used to do the encryption and signing. If we change the security mode to transport, then we'd be able to choose the transport credential type and its protection level. You can also, with the username and password credentials, so here we've chosen username for message security, if we choose the edit button, we can go in and select and either use a static set of username and password or use single sign-on in a particular application to go out and look up the appropriate credentials based on the ticket that's available on the message we're sending and look up the user's credentials and use those to authenticate to the service. On the custom adapter, you'll see that if we go to the credentials tab, we have the ability to specify username credentials in terms of 
single sign-on or a particular static username and password. We can also use the behavior tab for other types of credentials. So things like a client certificate perhaps or an issued token, we'd have to go in and configure that WCF endpoint behavior to apply those credentials appropriately. In the lab, you'll have a chance to call a web service from an orchestration. So you'll set up the web service call in the orchestration designer. You'll have a chance to configure the orchestration and the various send ports. And then you'll get a chance to send some messages into the orchestration and test that it correctly calls the web service and receives back the appropriate response.